So what you're looking at here is a simply supported beam and it consists of both point loads and UDL. And our objective is to calculate the reaction forces at RA and RB. And in order to do this, what I'm going to do first is to focus on resolving that UDL into a point load so that this system can look familiar. And what we have here for the UDL, the UDL is shown as two kilo newtons per meter and it's span across five meters. So what that UDL calculation should look like, so we're going to first convert UDL to point load. And that's gonna be a simple calculation. What that looks like is we're going to multiply our two kilonewtons per meter by five meters. And that's going to give us the entire force for the UDL, which is going to be 10 kilonewtons. And where we place that 10 kilonewtons now is going to be bang in the middle of that five meters. So that 10 kilonewtons as a point load, I'm going to just place that now right here. And you can see that green highlight that I'm using. And that's exactly where that 10 kilonewtons will be going. So that's the 10 kilonewtons. So that's the UDL being converted into a point load. And in terms of its distance, we did say we place it right there in the middle. So to evaluate that distance from RA, if I'm to go across like so, then right here is four meters and our entire system, the length is 18 meters. So if we have four, plus four, that's eight meters, plus another five meters, that's 13 meters. It means that right here has to be five meters. So our distance of the UDL as a point load from RA is now going to be four plus five. And because it's halfway between that five meters for the UDL, it's gonna be four plus five plus 2.5. So then this distance up here must be 11 point five meters. So just to reiterate how we got that 11.5 meters. So we added that four meters with that five meters and the UDL is placed halfway between right there, halfway between that five meters. So that gives us 2.5. So we added four meters plus five meters plus 2.5 meters. So now that we got our UDL sorted, what we need to do, we need to find the reaction forces. And what we're going to use is the system clockwise moments should be equal to counterclockwise moments. And just to reiterate what moment is, so when we're calculating moments, we're just simply doing the force multiplied by perpendicular distance. So now we're going to take the turning moment about point R A. So it means our rotation will be taking place right there, highlighted in blue at R A. So the first force that we have is that five kilonewtons right there, highlighted in yellow. So we're going to do five multiplied by four. So that's a perpendicular distance. That five kilonewtons is trying to rotate the system in a clockwise moment, like so. So that's why we have that on the clockwise side. So moving on then to that 19 kilonewtons, so we have 19 multiplied by its perpendicular distance of nine meters. And plus, moving on now to that UDL force, we're going to use the, the point load for the UDL, which is the 10 kilonewtons. So we end up getting 10 kilonewtons there, multiplied by its distance from RA, which is 11.5, as mentioned before. And then finally, we have that three kilonewtons. So plus that three kilonewtons there, and its distance from RA is going to be five plus five plus four, so that's 14 meters. And the last force that we have is RB, and RB is trying to go counterclockwise. So therefore, for RB, we have to multiply RB by 
18 because that's the perpendicular distance of RB from our pivot point. So we just need to sum all of this up now. So we have that 5 times 4, get that as 20. 19 times 9, 171. And 10 times 11.5, that's 115. And all of that equals RB multiplied by 18. So to get our final answer for RB, we just need to sum all of this force up and divide that by the 18 right there. So it's going to be 348 divided by 18. So the final answer for RB is 19.33 kilonewtons. So that's RB done. So we now need to find out what RA is. And to find out what RA is, we're just going to say that all the vertical forces, when we sum them up, they should be balanced. So therefore, the forces going up should add up to give you all the forces going down. And the forces that are going up, we only have two. We have our RA and RB. So therefore, going up is RA plus RB. And going down is everything else, including our point load. So what's going down is that 5 kilonewtons, check. That 19 kilonewtons, check. The UDL as a point load, which is 10 kilonewtons, check. And that 3 kilonewtons. So that's what we're summing up here. So let's do that calculation then. So it's going to be 5 kilonewtons plus 19 plus the 10, and that's our UDL as point load, plus the 3 kilonewtons. So we already know what RB is, so we can just put that in as well. So RB is 19.33, and when we sum everything on the right-hand side, this should give us a total of 5 plus 19 plus 10 plus 3, so we get that to be 37 kilonewtons. So that's what we're going to subtract our RB value from to get what RA is. So we get 37 minus 19.33. That gives us 17.67 kilonewtons. So there you go. We have RA and we have RB. And all you're required to do now is just to like the video, share it with someone who you think might need help, and subscribe to the channel to help me reach as many people as possible. And I will see you in the next video.